So in the previous video, I taught you how you can train ChatGPT or any other AI to write more like a human. I showed you experiments that you can run and how you can design them also using AI. So very effortlessly and how you can increase uh, or decrease AI detection score this way. So in this video, I just want to sh uh, share another prompt that resulted from such experiments. This time I used Gemini, so Google AI. And I want to just quickly go through that prompt and then show you the results also for AI detection. So what I did this time is again, asked ChatGPT to write me a 1000 word paragraph about the present and the future of AI. So this is the first one. The first text is produced. So let's just quickly run it through this scribber or Quillbot uh, tool, which is basically the same. And we can see that it sits at 62% uh, of AI. So now let's look at the other one, the other prompt, where uh, this time I used the prompt generated by uh, Gemini. And this prompt was generated based on the experiments uh, that I mentioned. By the way, needless to say, if you're wondering what experiments I'm talking about, uh, go ahead and watch this other video. I explain how you can set up an experiment, uh, use different data sets from AI and human uh, written text to quickly train it so that it can give you some prompts. So uh, go ahead and watch that video. But here we're looking at a prompt uh, that was developed basically. I cleaned it up slightly, but it was developed from this kind of an experiment. Uh, some of these things make uh, more sense. Some of them don't make much sense, but let's have a look what it says. So basically I did ask for the same thing. Write me a 1000 word paragraph about the future and present of AI. And this time I said, the goal is to make it sound like it was written by human and avoid AI detection. Quite a vague statement, but who knows, maybe it will help with something. The text should be slightly unpredictable, compressed, uneven, sometimes messy. Not ideal. In the past early days of AI detection, people just focus on that messiness. They try to even avoid grammar rules and stuff like that. I don't intend to make it completely unreadable, but just to make it slightly choppy. Uh, while staying true to the meaning, keep the writing direct, factual and compressed. That's the key thing I talk about uh, being concise a lot. Uh, cut filler and shorten explanations. Uh, so again, uh, just to, to keep it to the point, uh, this part of the prompt is kind of a mixture of my observations and the, the actual prompt. So we'll get to the prompt soon. Um, say things once and don't restate them. So just to avoid, you know, to avoid repetition. Uh, different rhythm, mix long, heavy, uh, close, heavy sentences with short ones. I believe uh, we had the same thing in the previous prompt, in the previous video. Very important for burstiness, for, for unpredict uh, being unpredictable and to change uh, the sentence length and and uh, the clauses and, and tenses and everything. Make it less predictable. Let structure be uneven. Uh, some paragraphs could be long, others uh, just one or two lines. So not to have equal paragraphs. Paragraphs are super important. When I look at AI writing, I usually expect straight away that the section will be, I said it in another video, probably at around 700 to 1000 words, I would say it will contain four to six paragraphs that are almost exactly the same length. So that's that's why I asked for it. It probably, uh, I don't think it, it listened anyway, but avoid perfect balance and symmetry. And then this is come. Uh, this comes from uh, Gemini, Google AI and, and uh, the comparisons and the analysis that it, it uh, ran on the text that I uploaded. Um, and then I kind of cleaned it up uh, again. So you can see it's just to make it rough, Missing commas, I don't like it, to be honest, but um, I don't think it will do it much, but you can decide. Uh, avoid elegance, you know, like a first draft. This is the easy way to do it, because then the question is how how much you want to change it or how important is, you know, bypassing AI, how important is the quality. But you'll see that the quality will still be there. Both active and passive voice, same thing I did in, in the previous video, switching unpredictably, just making it less predictable. Uh, so yeah, so everything is uh, firm, simple, so the tone, but not uh, polished. Uh, connectors don't rely on and. This is important. This is secret knowledge that you'll be uh, shocked and surprised to hear. But but this is one of the key and the most important things for AI detection somehow. I don't know how this works, uh, but I only discovered it later as I was working. I'm involved in the development of AI tools and I'm involved in engineering prompts and this kind of thing. So it's one of the things I discovered eventually is that uh, replacing and with different connectors just does wonders. Um, and, and here again, it's all about how you join the sentences. 
vocabulary, plain words, clear, you know, to the point, concise language. I keep talking about it in every single video. Uh, structure rules, no bullet points, no list of three things. You know why? I have other videos where I talk about typical AI structures, listing th three things. Uh, so again, about sentences, short sentences, longer sentences, and the final output, what it should uh, look like and feel like. And here is uh, what it wrote for us. So you can see that it's kind of okay. AI sits in a strange moment right now, caught between being a tool we use every day and something we still barely understand. So the present feels crowded with half-finished ideas, rush deployments, awkward experiments that companies pretend are complete. Uh, you could argue that this is not ideal for your academic thesis level writing, maybe. Maybe it's slightly too informal. So, of course, it depends where you're planning to, to use this. But uh, nevertheless, it's not incorrect. It's not full of grammatical errors or nothing like that. So let's use this one and see how it does. We paste it here again and just run the A detection. So you can see the results are quite different, aren't they? So again, as I explained in the previous video, this is not guaranteeing you anything. It really depends on where you're submitting it, what kind of context you're working, uh, working with and in. So in academic context, this would go through Turnitin, probably, or CopyLeaks, which are much more advanced, and chances are they would spot AI. You will have to humanize it manually. I do have videos where I explain how to do it, how to edit it, how to make it really undetectable. Uh, feel free to go and watch those videos. If you're struggling or overwhelmed, remember I offer plenty of services, for, uh, including individual tutoring, group training for how to do it, including training for what tools to use, how exactly I go through every single text, as well as uh, services where I manually edit and humanize your submitted uh, written text. Uh, but the key messages here that I want to communicate is that in my workflow, the surface level burstiness, which is what these tools such as Scribber or Quillbot offer, um, is the first thing I'm looking at. And by using such prompts, we're making it easier for ourselves if we later plan to humanize that text for a more demanding context. Like I said, academic context, turn it in, copy leaks. If you're working as a blogger maybe or somewhere where it's not that important to go through such a rigorous system, then maybe this uh, having a, uh, a prompt like that will be enough for you. And also, if it doesn't work the same way or doesn't work the first time, remember, you can keep trying, keep changing it. You can also ask the same tool several times and it may produce different results because I've been told sometimes, oh, this prompt doesn't work at all for me. You have to keep trying. It's AI, it's never exactly replicable. It's never exactly the same. But I can see uh, the results being different and it's very obvious that they are much better because you do want to reduce that AI detection score by, by as much as possible. So if you learned something new, if you enjoyed this prompt or have any thoughts, uh, comment under the video, like the video. If you learned something from it, uh, share it with others. If you know people who can benefit from it and also help me develop this channel, reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully I can do it. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.